Welcome back to Skincare 101. Today I'm talking about daily sunscreen use. Now, if you're new to the channel, or maybe you're just starting out in your skincare journey, it might be a thing that you have a question mark beside, do I really need to wear sunscreen every day? They're annoying, they're sticky. You know, a lot of objections might rise in your mind, but I hope with today's video, I can convince you that not only is it necessary, but you can actively enjoy this as a step with the right information. So bear with me and make sure you stay right to the end because I'm gonna be giving you pearls about sunscreen today. Now, when it comes to skin aging, a lot of what we see is actually a manifestation of UV radiation impacting our skin on a daily basis. So those wrinkles, those sagging, those brown spots, the uneven texture, the model tone, the broken capillaries, literally all of them are potentially reversible in, to a large extent if you manage to avoid UV exposure. So 80% of aging we now know is due to UV radiation. And not only that, we now know that daily sunscreen has been proven to reduce those sounds of aging. And the biggest study was done in Australia, in a place called Queensland, where over the period of four years, two groups were randomized, one to wearing sunscreen every day with diligence, the other to using it when they felt like it. The group that diligently used SPF every single day manifested 24% less aging than the group that used it randomly. And that was just SPF 15. So the proof is there, wearing daily sunscreen makes a huge difference to how your skin ages. So of course we know that sunscreen use also reduces the risk of skin cancer, but I find in practice that it's the promise of younger looking skin that can be more motivating. In terms of choosing a sunscreen then, so we've decided that we, we need one, it's useful, it's important. Um, then it's about finding one that you feel comfortable using because at the end of the day, the sunscreen that's best for you is the one that you actively like using. Lots of objections exist around sunscreen use because formulas in the past have been sticky, they've clogged up your pores, maybe they made it difficult to wear makeup. Um, lots of objections, greasy finish, you name it, I've heard it. But the good news is there is a formula that's right for everyone because things have moved on and gotten so much better. Now, one of the things that causes the most confusion around sunscreen use, and I find that where there is confusion, there is a tendency not to use it, is the numbering system that tells us how much protection is offered. Now, when we think about UV rays, we have to think about UVB rays that burn and UVA rays that age. And I think it's also important to make a distinction between behavior for the beach and behavior for everywhere else. So behavior for the beach is really about, you know, probably exposing large amounts of skin. It's about avoiding burning. So it's about avoiding those UVB rays. Um, whereas the behavior for every day is largely about keeping skin looking young and fresh. So therefore the UVA protection is the most important part when it comes to daily sunscreen use. So this is why there really is no cheat when it comes to using daily SPF. You have to use the highest factor possible. The reason is this, SPF, which protects against UVB rays, the level of protection is usually in proportion to the level of UVA protection. So more UVB ray protection equals more UVA protection. That's why we can't afford to use a low SPF sunscreen because we want all that good UVA cover. And for the most part, when you see the UVA symbol in a circle on a bottle of sunscreen, that means it's got at least a third of the level of UVB protection. So bottom line, more UVB protection equals more UVA protection. And that means better protection against aging. So with that in mind, we want to think about the type of filters that we seek out. And again, it's about balance. It's about a formula that will give you that cover. We talk about chemical filters. We talk about mineral filters. At the end of the day, for most people, the SPF and UVA protection is all you need to really get into, provided that you like the texture and finish of the sunscreen. I find that mineral sunscreens tend to work best for those with very sensitive skin um, and facial concerns like eczema, 
inflammatory conditions like perioral dermatitis and rosacea because the filters tend not to irritate the skin. And that's very useful when you've got sensitive skin. Mineral filters work by both deflecting and absorbing UV radiation, whereas chemical filters largely work as little sponges absorbing UV radiation on the whole. So which you use, again, as I say, it doesn't matter too much as long as the overall protection level of the sunscreen is adequate. So for me, that means broad spectrum SPF 50 is going to be the best for you in terms of getting all that great UVA protection. So a really common question is, what is the difference between SPF 30 and SPF 50? Is it really big enough to matter? And on the surface of it, it, it seems like not a big difference. So SPF 30 blocks about 96.8% of UVB rays. SPF 50 blocks about 98%. But if you think about it, that actually means 50% more UVB rays are transmitted by the lower factor, which over time, if we're thinking about daily behavior over the course of weeks, months, years, decades, actually translate into a big extra exposure. So my advice is always to go high. The other reason for that is being realistic, humans tend to underapply. And when it comes to sunscreen, the single most important thing is to apply the right dose. Know that that number, SPF 50 or SPF 30, is only guaranteed if you apply the product at a thickness of two milligrams per centimeter squared. It's a lot. If you've seen me use my measuring spoons before, you'll know this is a lot. So for the face alone, that means about a quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen. For the body, head to toe, it's a shot glass. And each application should contain that quantity. So it's ultra important that you get familiar with what that looks like so that when you're applying your facial sunscreen every day, you're applying the correct amount. Now to make that easier, because I know it's a lot, it's often best doing that in two thin layers rather than just one. And it's why I developed my 13 dot technique to make it easier because when you're applying sunscreen, hello Ginger, you wanna get an even layer all over. We're painting a wall essentially. We don't wanna apply more here, less here, more here, less here. We want it even. Do not be like going to Palcho and apply sunscreen where the sun hits. Final points to note, um, always, reapply it every 120 minutes or more often if you're by the beach and you're in contact with water and do use a water resistant formula if you are swimming. Also, do not mix your sunscreen with other cosmetics. This is such a common practice and I've even heard it from beauty journalists who I think, you know, at this stage in the, their career should know better, but do not treat sunscreen as a tool that can be blended in with other things to make it more cosmetically elegant. It's a bit like when you buy a medicine, you wouldn't grind it up and mix it in with your multivitamins. Do you know what I mean? So please, please, please use your sunscreen neat. It's like a shot. <laughs> what I've realized over time with patients is the importance of finding the right product for them. And that's in terms of feel, finish and formula. So feel is how emollient the product is or how sticky or not the product is. And I think that's particularly important when it comes to guys in general um, and those with very oily skin where a more matte finish is desired. And in those instances, I'm fond of HelioCare Gel, which is an SPF 50, good for kind of sporty guys or active people who just cannot bear that feeling that some sunscreens have where there's a the sort of a sensation of something being on their skin. Um, that dries down really nicely. It's got a very subtle tint so that it doesn't tend to leave any kind of cast on the skin. And yeah, I've used this one for a while in my practice and I really like it. For those who like a mineral sunscreen, so sensitive skin, um, those who have conditions like rosacea, perioral dermatitis, or post-procedure, a tinted sunscreen with mineral filters is a great option. I'm a big fan of Gossamer Tint One for that reason. I also like Jan Marini Physical Protectant, which is a slightly warmer tint. Both are really nice um, and offer great protection. Then 
when it comes to a more lotion-like finish, and some people just like that feeling of almost like a light moisturizer on the skin, the SkinCeuticals Ultra Facial UV Defense Sunscreen is a nice one. That's got chemical sunscreen filters. So very little to see when that's blended into the skin. And, you know, great for someone with normally co normal combination skin who doesn't want anything too rich and something light under makeup. And then finally, you can have a hybrid where you mix chemical and physical sunscreen filters like we've used in the Flawless Daily Sunscreen. And as an added bonus, we have niacinamide in there, which is powerful antioxidant, it's great for pigmentation, and it's great for those who are acne prone as well, given that a lot of people avoid wearing daily sunscreen because they're concerned about it triggering breakouts. So ultra reassuring and very, very sympathetic to those with breakout prone skin. So I often think of sunscreen as being like something you need to keep a wardrobe of. There are different sunscreens for different uses. So you might have a water resistant, very much a matte finish sunscreen for sport, for activities or for hiking. And then you might have something that's a bit more dewy finish whenever you're relying on that almost as your base layer, particularly if it's a tinted sunscreen and you're just applying a little bit of concealer under the eyes and around the nose. That's become very popular, I think, post pandemic as people are really paring back the number of layers they apply to their skin. And similarly, if you've got very oily skin, you might want something that's more mattifying to act as a primer so that your makeup isn't disrupted. So basically do the homework, find the one that's right for you. I guarantee it's out there because there's such a great selection of products to choose from. But at the end of the day, aim high, high SPF with, you know, associated high UVA protection factor is gonna be the best solution for aging prevention in the long term. So I hope I've convinced you that sunscreen is the first anti-aging product that you should be buying. It's more important than any other element in your skincare routine when it comes to tackling and preventing the signs of aging. And I think it's really a pillar that you put in place before you think about adding anything else into your routine. Cleanse, moisturize, SPF, and once those foundations are in place, then we can start talking about actives, which I'm gonna get on to next week. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If so, hit subscribe and make sure you're following for more content like this. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.